Go slash, go, we're gonna get run over. Oh. <laughs> and we fell over. Welcome to the RC Adventure Channel, everybody. The table in my workshop right now is taken up with a rather ginormous airplane. So I'm coming at you from my living room today. The task at hand here is gonna be swapping out all the electronics in my SCX24. For starters, I have the new Emacs servo. This is much higher torque, so it should give me a lot better control. Next up is the Castle Creations Micro Sidewinder 2 ESC. It's capable of doing both brushed and brushless, and it's fully programmable. Uh, I've been using this brand for years, great quality products, so I highly recommend it. And last but not least, I just picked up this Futaba 3PV radio. It's a fairly basic programmable computer system. Most importantly, this one has 10 model memory, so I can get rid of that entire mess of transmitters. Now, I'm having to move every few years thanks to the Air Force, so it'll be nice not having to deal with this much crap. And here's what you get in the box. So, instruction manuals, who cares? The transmitter and the receiver. And the rest goes to recycling. To power up the radio, simply press and hold the power. The car selected is on the bottom and the radio's model number was on the top. Also M2 or Model 2, if you want to think of it that way, is the car that you have selected. In this case, it's my Traxxas Slash. That uses the R304SB receiver, which is telemetry and SBUS enabled. That's why I'm getting the receiver voltage up here on the top. For an additional $50 or so, I can buy the SBS-01V external voltage sensor, which would give me the battery voltage on my electric powered slash. Bottom right corner is the transmitter's battery voltage. Across the top here are all the menus that we can go through, and I'll try to go through those fairly quickly here. Pressing the left or right arrow keys is what will select the menus. Now we'll see that uh, the first item on here, the model, and if I use the plus or minus here, I can select other models that I have saved in here. In this case, this would be my SCX24 with a C10 body on it, and you'll notice it's flashing off power. What that means is I need to turn the transmitter off and then back on again because my SCX24 uses the R203GF receiver, which is SFHSS and not telemetry capable but I'm gonna go back to my slash, which uses an R304SB receiver, which is, uses the TFHSS protocol. And the next button, we can go through the name. We can set up our low voltage alarm. Now we're over to system. This is the aforementioned S versus TFHSS protocols. Link is to link a new receiver to the radio. Now we're looking at where the dual rate control is. In this case, the DT3 is the little guy up front here. Channel three is controlled from switch one, which is right here on the side. But I can switch those around. Uh, I believe it's just between those two points. I haven't messed around with it that much to see where else I could put it. Now we're onto the trim settings. Then the sub trim settings, uh, we can do that for channels one, two, and three. Dual rates, if I wanted to set that up in here, I could. Now you'll notice that EPA is flashing. Of course, that stands for Environmental Protection Agency. Actually, it also stands for Endpoint Adjustment, which I think is more relevant in this case. And we've got channel one selected right, and by turning the steering wheel, you can select left. And then you use the plus and minus buttons to adjust that. We can also adjust endpoints for channel two, which is throttle and channel three. SMX is for the mixing, in this case inhibited because I don't need them, but I can do four wheel steering or a brake mix with the throttle. This is for channel reversing. Uh, one, two, and three, four, there's no control on that one. Now we're on to exponentials, which we have for channels one and channel two. And what that would allow you to do is, say on your steering, if you wanted it to be less sensitive in the middle, you can program it to do that, and then it would become more sensitive the farther you turn. So say you hit that high speed straight away, and you want to be able to make small corrections uh, without losing control of your car, you can do that. 
You can also go the other way with your exponential to make it more sensitive in the middle and less toward the extremes if you wanted to. I found in the case of my crawlers having a lot of exponential on the throttle gave me significantly better low speed control and then if I wanted to I could still gun it and not have to flip through switches like I did on my stock SCX24 transmitter. The next one here is fail safe. Uh, you can set it to to basically just stop the car if it loses signal from the radio. If it's a gas car, you can also set it to apply the brakes for you. Next one after that is for your anti-lock braking system. And there's kind of like a low, medium, high on there. I found uh, on the ice that I have out in front of my house right now, that really came in handy on the slash, made it a lot easier to control. Last but not least, here is copy. And you just use the plus or minus buttons here to select where, what you want to copy and to where. This lets you make changes to a program without losing the original program. So you can try out the changes, and if you don't like it, you just go back. And there you go. That's everything that you can adjust in the program on this radio. Uh, the MSRP on this is either $150 or $180, depending on which receiver that you get. So that's a pretty darn good feature set at that price point, I think. Anyway, enough talking about it. Let's go put it in the truck so we can try it out. As far as tools go, basic toolkit like this one. Uh, if you don't have one, check the description for a link. I'll have it down there for you. Go ahead and get your soldering iron plugged in. You'll need that solder and a little heat shrink tubing for the speed control. And then whatever you use to waterproof your receiver. If you don't know how to do that, uh, I have a video on it. There'll be a link at the end. So if you want, you can check that out. And let's get started. One other tool I forgot to mention, uh, wire cutters if you have them, or if not, some uh, body scissors should work because you have to modify the corner of the servo tray in there. You gotta cut out some of that plastic uh, to give the wire for the new servo a spot to pass through. And it's just like that, it's just cutting out the little corner only. So I just discovered another thing I'm gonna need. Slightly longer screws for mounting the servos. Fortunately, I saved all the old screws from uh, all the upgrades that I've made. So I have some longer ones on hand. Onto the ESC. So it's a pretty good size ESC. Uh, it's almost as big, really, as the receiver ESC combo that it comes with, but uh, I think we'll be all right. Uh, I mean, if I have to, maybe I'll move things around a little bit, but we'll see. To attach the thing to the motor, I'm going to cut these connectors off because they are huge and I don't need them. And we also don't use the white wire, just the red and black ones, positive and negative, solder it to the motor wires, and that's all there is to it. So that's all the soldering. Next up, uh, this is optional, but uh, if you have a Castle Creations ESC, these things are programmable and you're gonna wanna program it. Uh, to do that, highly recommend getting the B-Link programmer. This is a little Bluetooth thing. You just plug it into the throttle channel on your receiver and then plug it in like so. Get the app on your phone, link new controller and then follow the on-screen instructions. Once you got the ESC programmed, you just remove the B-Link. Before heading outside, I suppose a test of the new system in comparison to the stock one is in order. On a crawler, you really want low speed control. So I'm gonna do essentially like a slow race. 
you know, see which vehicle can go slower kind of thing. The Jeep stock transmitter has a low, medium, and high switch for the throttle sensitivity. It's set for low right now, which is what you want for low speed control. Most of the time I have it set in medium, and I've also noticed that there's very little difference between medium and high. Now in the pickup truck, I programmed a lot of exponential into the ESC, so I should have better low speed control while still being able to get full throttle simply by squeezing the trigger. Anyway, enough talking, let's see how this works. Uh, by the way, full disclaimer, I'm doing this two at a time, so this may not be the most accurate test, but, you know, whatever. The yellow Jeep is running a stock transmitter and receiver, but other than that, both vehicles are using the same motor and steering servo. Seems like there's a pretty clear winner there. Uh, I also noticed that the pickup seemed to be running a little bit smoother, but, you know, we'll have to take it outside and test it a little more thoroughly to find out. So here's how the exponential part works. We can start out nice and slow. Then full throttle, and just like that, the truck takes off at full speed. To do that with a Jeep, I would have to open up the, the lid on the radio and then flip the switch into high. Where well, that ability would come in handy is if you're crawling down a steep hill and the truck starts to tip forward, you could immediately give it full throttle to keep it upright, whereas with a Jeep it would take time and you'd probably end up flipping over. Anyway, enough talking, let's get outside and play. So where are we, you guys? Hatcher Pass. Hatcher Pass? Well, not really. Hatcher Pass is right over there, kind of in the direction of the sun. And that is closed right now for the season because of the snow on the roads. But when that yes. opens up in the spring, we are going to come back because there are all kinds of awesome lakes and trails and camping and stuff up there. So we're definitely going to hit that up. This is the Independence Mine State Park. Up there is the old Independence Mine. And uh, the roads up to it are closed right now. But you could still snowshoe up there if you wanted to. Uh, you could walk without snowshoes, except for the fact that right now I am about halfway up my thigh in snow. <laughs> so <laughs> instead, we are up here on the hill just to do some sledding, aren't we, guys? Here's my next crazy idea. Brian, you're gonna drive the sled, okay? And I'm gonna drive the slash, which is right here in front of us, and try to film at the same time. I get the feeling that we're gonna fall a lot. But hey, that's all right, it's all about having fun, right? <laughs> all right, Brian, gotta grab the rope. You ready? You ready? Let's go. There we go, we're going now. Go Slash, go, oh, we're gonna get run over. Oh. <laughs> and we fell over. <laughs> yeah. And we're stuck laying here in the snow. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's all I got for today. Uh, if you want to get a Futaba 3PV radio of your own, I highly recommend it. It's been a great radio. 
uh, you know, just check the uh, description for a link uh, to where you can get one. In the meantime, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to see more like this, uh, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to know when the next ones are up and ready to go, that's what the bell icon's for. Until next time, remember, you're not having fun until you break something. <laughs>